The internal rate of return is a really useful tool in deciding whether or not to accept a project for a firm. But in some cases, you actually end up where you have multiple IRRs, right? So you might have an IRR of 10% and 21%, and then maybe one of negative 7%, all for the same project. And in such cases, you really can't do anything with the IRR. It's really kind of useless, and you're better off just using net present value. So but I'm going to go through an example in which you'd have multiple IRRs. But first, let me just give you a quick just kind of review. The decision rule with IRR is that you're only going to accept the project if the IRR exceeds the cost of capital. And by cost of capital, I'm talking about the opportunity cost of capital. So IRR is only guaranteed to work, right? So it's only just going to be foolproof if all of the negative cash flows come before, they occur before the positive cash flows, right? So if you have you have upfront, you have negative 10 million, and then you have positive 3 million, and then positive 5 million, positive 8 million, etc. You have some set of cash flows that looks like that, then you can use IRR. But if you start having where actually the negative cash flow comes at the end, after the positive cash, that's when you start to, to kind of wreak havoc uh, on the situation. So let's take an example where, let's say that you start a construction company, and you're, you're accepting your very first project. And for this project, you're going to receive $500,000 up front, right? So we'll call that year zero. So right up front, you're going to get five hundred grand, And then at the end of year five is your second and final payment of $10 million. So I guess you can think of the $500,000 as like a deposit or something, and then you get paid the $10 million at the end, at the end of year five. Now, throughout the life of the project, you're going to spend $4 million a year building this building or whatever, for the next four years to complete the project. So at the end of year five, you don't have a payment. So so let me just kind of sketch out what the what this would look like. So let's put together a little little timeline. Okay, so we've got year zero, year one, year two, year three, four, and five. And then the cash flows are gonna look like this. So up front you're getting positive, oh, let me change colors. You're getting positive 500,000. I'm just going to put 500K here to abbreviate that. And then in year, year one, negative 4 million. I'll just put negative 4M. And then negative 4 million again in year two, year three, year four, negative 4 million. And then year five, you're going to have positive. You're going to have positive 10 million. Right? And you don't have to worry about that, that $4 million expenditure that's not coming. That's just in those middle the, the, those four years. So you've got a positive cash flow up front, positive cash flow in the, at the end, and then negative cash flows in the middle. That's the way that this is laid out. So let's calculate our internal rate of return. Now, you could do it by hand if that's, if that's what you prefer. I, I use the Microsoft Excel, the function IRR. So you just put an equal sign and then IRR and then in parentheses, see so I've got the parentheses here. In parentheses you've got you've got the cash flow. So you start with and, and I just put five hundred K here to abbreviate it. Actually, if you want to write it out, it'd be five hundred thousand, right? So five and five zeros. And then you would have the negative four million, and again I abbreviated it just so this wasn't a really long line, but it would look like this. Right, so negative four million, and then so you just list all the cash flows there in in order, right? In, in in order of time, and then at the end you don't have to put this, but when there's multiple IRRs, I've got that point four there, and what I'm really guessing it's like it's it's a guess, and you're guessing at what the internal rate of return might be. So in this case, I'm saying like oh let's let's you know tell Excel to look around forty percent. The reason I put a guess, I ran it once without a guess. And then once with a guess, because when you when you have more than one IRR, if you don't put the guess, it's just going to return one internal rate of return to you. It's not going to say, yeah, actually there's three, and here are the three. So that's kind of a failing maybe of, of Excel. But so I put I put a little. If you make some guesses with it, then it'll end up revealing all the different IRRs. So in any event, you don't have to focus too much on that here. We're just kind of concerned with the intuition. So your IRRs are going to be negative 17.24%. Let me put this here. 
hope you can see that I'm running out of space so negative 17.24 percent and 799.61 percent so that's a they're pretty big difference there right so if you just looked at this this one here and said oh wow we actually got a negative internal rate of return but then you look at this and it's this ridiculously high number so the reality is that you should be ignoring both of these because when you have more than one internal rate of return I mean in some cases the 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 in-between amount so it'd be like anything in between these two numbers in some cases it's it's positive and you should accept that project and then sometimes but but it just as easily could be that anything in between those two numbers you should reject so so really don't try and get into reading into this at all if there's more than one IRR just ignore the IRR altogether and what you really want to be doing is you want to look at your net present value and so I've, I've just kind of put here if you were going to calculate the net present value um, you, you've got I'm not going to go through the, the all the calculations for you but I'll just give you the end results so here so you're you'd have negative five million oh let me negative five million nine hundred and seventy thousand two hundred and forty nine and I just got that that number from here from this equation that gives you the negative five million nine hundred and seventy thousand two forty nine that's the net present value of this project because it's negative you're going to reject this project so again don't get don't get into you know if you got more than one IRR regardless of what they are just ignore them and just go and calculate the net present value and 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 it's important if you're wondering why do we even have this situation where we have multiple IRRs well if you remember we said that IRR is only guaranteed to work it's only like money in the bank so to speak gonna it's just gonna be foolproof when all the negative cash flows right so all the negative cash flows happen first and they have to come before the positive cash. And if we look here we got the negative cash flows here but what happens before that we actually have a positive cash flow right off the bat so that's why this is kind of messed up you're getting more than one internal rate of return so in a situation like this just calculate the MPV and go with that